tonight in high school football. District showdowns here, there, and everywhere. Two top 10 teams do battle in A-Town. Number nine, Maynard against seventh ranked Elgin with the district championship in the balance. In Big D, the city of Mesquite gathers for the Jaguars and the Skeeters. Winner is in the driver's seat of District 12, 5A. The defending state champs, Cameron Yo, looking to do yeoman's work with an upset-minded Lago Vista. And the DQ Big Game of the Week takes us to the Coastal Bend region for a small town two-step with playoff implications on the line. Last one with the ball wins. Grab your helmet, scoreboard live kicks off now. <laughs> Welcome into the world's most comprehensive high school football show or your money back. He is the guru, Craig Way. I'm his sidekick, Rick Renner. This is a night where many district championships may have already been decided. We always have that one week where it turns into Upset Friday. Would this be the week with several high-ranked teams being pushed, including a number one? A number one going down tonight, but it may not shock you based on the teams that... Uh, have been really good throughout the course of the season, some of the teams we've seen all season long. So uh, I have a feeling you might not be stunned by it. Nevertheless, whenever, Rick, a number one goes down, it always raises eyebrows. That's right. And speaking of raising eyebrows, we do so with separation Friday in the Alamo City. A huge one Saturday night between Madison and Reagan at Hero Stadium. But Friday, undefeated Smithson Valley has our eye. The Rangers are led by legendary head coach Larry Hill, who usually sounds like this by halftime. He's coached three state championship teams, losing to Denton Ryan in 4A, South Lake Carroll twice in 5A. Could this be the year? The Spring Branch, Texas, for the Rattlers and the Rangers. Smithson Valley ready to rock and roll in this one. And check out quarterback Garrett Smith. He can't find an open receiver, so he will keep it for the short game. And that's always a good thing. Smith, though, again, this time right up the gut for the short TD run. Smithson Valley would pour on the points in this one, 55-7. They are 6-0. Coach Larry Hill is now in the top 50 all-time in wins in the state of Texas with 219. He ties the late, great John Outlaw, who coached Des Bryant at Lufkin High. A big one in District 28-4A. The second-ranked Brenham Bears against Burbank. You can put it in the bank. I think you could say that Brennan made a statement early in this one. First drive of the game, Deshaun Key to Makai Green, who makes some green with envy. A couple of moves, and he is gone. The only guy on your screen is him, and it's 7 or nothing. But then, back comes the other guys. Brennan's offense, though, just back to work. They could not be stopped in this game. Key to Green, and then it's Nathaniel Wells doing well, running well, coming right at you, and then going past you. And the defense, 69 to nothing. The point here, look out for the Bears, who have never lost to Burbank, improving the 7-0, sitting in the driver's seat in the district at 3-0. The only speed bump in their way, probably Lanier next week. Well, even if Thursday night's game between Elgin and Maynard didn't have all of the attractive elements of a classic, Elgin ranked seventh in the state in the 4A poll, Maynard number nine. Both teams a perfect 5-0 and, oh and sitting on top of the 17 4A standings with first place on the line. Even if it didn't have all that, it would still mean a great deal. You see, Elgin and Maynard are arch rivals separated by only 10 miles of U.S. 290 in eastern Travis County, all of which added up to a game that more than lived up to the hype. So we go to Wildcat Stadium, and in the first quarter, there's the purple and white of Elgin. They'd already been behind for the first time in a game all season long. Game now tied at 7, and Maynard's backup quarterback, Jamal Collins, 41-yard touchdown pass to Darren Guyton, 14-7. Stangs liking what they see, but Elgin up 20 to 14, second of the quarter. It's Tyrone Owens breaking free to tie the score at 20. Later in the second, it's Elgin's. Torrey Simmons, as uh, Terrell Simmons takes it in, the seven-yard touchdown run. Elgin's up 27-20, and a disastrous end of the first half for Maynard. A fumble deep in their own end of the field, recovered by Elgin's Kyle Snell, and it leads to Datrian Simmons, who takes it in from 13 yards out. Elgin led 34-20 at the half. The Mustangs led 40, or rather the Wildcats led 41-20 in the third quarter. Maynard makes a huge, furious comeback to tie the score at 41. 
Elgin converts a third and 18 on what proves to be a game-winning touchdown drive, and Datreon Simmons scores his fifth touchdown of the ball game. Elgin's still perfect, still state ranked, still undefeated, and by the way, Maynard's still good. Elgin wins it, however, 48 to 41. Wow. Okay, that was one of the games in 17-4A. What about the other big one, the Battle of Georgetown? The Eagles and Eastview. Patriots looking to remain tied atop the district standings. They had a 40-minute delay because, as you can tell, the lights went out. And then, once they got it going, it was Ben Botlinger lighting it up. 12-yard touchdown pass. Yeah. Eagles lead 7-0. Pats come back. Long pass down to Chandler Crawford. Down to the one-yard line. Sets up the touchdown sneak there. Later, it's Eastview's Cornelio Garcia turning the corner from six yards out. 14-7. Back come the Eagles, however. They'll tie it up again. And Botlinger again looking to get it into the end zone. 14-14 at the half. The night the lights went out in Williamson County. It was Georgetown beating Eastview 35-28. to A lot of that going around tonight. With that, let's take a look at the Class 4A Top 10 and how they fare. The Alito Bearcats continue to garnish the most first-place votes. But Brenham is right there waiting for the stumble as Patrick Mahomes and the explosive White House Wildcats are right there, too. Defending state champ Cedar Park quietly moving up the ranks with their ridiculous schedule, Craig. Yeah, and, and of course, Cedar Park didn't have to uh, play tonight. Off this week, we mentioned the elgin Manor matchup. We were looking forward to that. Lived up to all the hype. Geyer very much on track, and Texas City wins a shootout tonight. Those were some of the highlights out of the 4A Top 10. Impressive stuff. Let's take a timeout now. Coming up next, a crazy good district opener between Lavernia and Pleasanton. Coach DeMont has the Eagles soaring on a six-game winning streak. Highlights of that, plus the Fox Sports Southwest girl on social media, and then stops at Wichita Falls to DF Dub if you keep it where it is. High School Scoreboard Live is brought to you by Ford F-Series, America's best-selling truck for 36 straight years. By Dairy Queen, for the best-tasting treats, eats, and drinks in Texas. DQ just tastes better. And by State Farm, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Scoreboard Live rolls on in the Alamo City region for a huge one between Lavernia and Pleasanton. And early on, you know, this game was all about the numbers. Lavernia turning in some big plays on offense and riding that for the early lead with the ball here and the ball carrier getting it done. Uh, not if the rest had something to do with it, right? Dylan Dagey with the recovery of that one. From there, Colby Skelton finds Justin, who's Justin Time Parker, and that kid goes Luganus for the game's first score at 6 to nothing. Then check out what happens on the ensuing kick. Pleasanton with the ball, and this one really does come out of legit. Look at Lavernia with the recovery again and another touchdown. Tristan Summy straight up the gut, and that one is good. Even if you're playing flag football, Pleasanton with the win, it's a pleasant one for them. 32 to 26, the final there. We continue with number seven, Cibolo Steel, continuing their winning ways. Looking to drum up a win over Corpus Christi King. Early in the first, check out Brian Lewis on the TD run. Burke Burnett would convert on that one. Actually, you had that. King and Steele, and uh, boy, I'll tell you what, whenever you got Justin Stockton, you know it's big time. One of the best backs in the state is 15th touchdown of the season. Later on, D'Angelo Wallace coming in on the receiving end of that 49-20. Steele with the win over Corpus Christi King. Sometimes we mess up those shot sheets. It's live TV. You just <laughs> never know what's going to go on. Time now to see what's all the rage in a busy night in social media and for that Liddy of the Fox Sports Southwest girls, flying solo with Amy out sick tonight. Girl, you can get better. Liddy, what is the buzz? Thanks, Rick. What an awesome night it has been in high school football. Social media has been booming all night, and we are going to show you a few of my favorite photos tonight. Our very first picture is from Gabe Hernandez. We start out with this incredible photo from yesterday's Mission Memorial versus Ed Couch Elsa game. It's a mission player holding the flag for the national anthem. You know, that has got to be a really cool feeling. You know, unfortunately, Mission ended up losing this one at 22 to 3. Our next picture is from Chris. You know, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and a lot of schools are wearing pink to raise awareness. This is a really sweet photo. Chris is spending his Friday with a cancer survivor, his mom, at the Colony Frisco Heritage Game. Colony wins tonight 41-21. Pretty big win. Our next picture is from Danny. 
It is a huge game tonight that had everyone talking, the Allen Plano East game. So these bright lights of that $60 million stadium were not lit up without a little bit of trouble. And we will see that with our next picture. This is from Sports Day HS. So if you didn't hear the story about the power outage, um, a car hit a transformer and knocked out the power at Allen Stadium. So that's a little crazy. Here you can see a couple of fans were getting rescued after being stranded in an elevator. And Allen won, or should we say dominated, 62 to 17. So we always have a lot of fun here on Football Fridays. We've really enjoyed your photos, really enjoyed your tweets, and that's all we have in social media, but keep sending in those photos using that hashtag TXHS. FB, and we will see you next week, Rick. Thanks, Liddy. Great job as the lone wolf tonight. Fans, keep those pictures and comments coming. I don't know how you run into a transformer in that huge school. Pretty amazing stuff there. Let's motor on to Wichita Falls and the region there. A big district showdown between Lake Dallas and Wichita Falls. Ryder tonight. Crazy things happen in 5 4. Yeah, you know, you think of Denton Geyer being uh, in command of things, but Ryder's very tough. Lake Dallas, of course, had the loss to Byron Nelson, and uh, Byron Nelson Trophy Club lost to Denton. Geyer, and of course, Geyer has been in control of things. But Wichita Falls Rider certainly equal to the task to be able to beat a lot of teams in the state. And the Rider Raiders roll big over Lake Dallas to get the district went 45 to 14. Now we drop to class 3A, and that means Hershey taking on Burke Burnett early in the first quarter. That's Brian Lewis, touchdown run. Burke tacks on a two point conversion. Dogs lead at 8 nothing. Four minutes to go in the quarter. Third down, Hershey quarterback Terrence Cooper to Cedric Battle. And in for the score, extra point trims the margin to 8-7. Now, in the second quarter on fourth down, Burt Burnett going to come out to the punt and block it. Rico Suave Shumpert. I like that. Block there. How about that? Hershey with the win, 35 to 28. That's my old DJ name. I put that in there. Hey, let's gander at the top 10 in Class 3A. Number one, Gilmer continues to impress with their win of a rival, Henderson. Business as usual pretty much throughout the top 10 here. A couple, Idle and Argyle and Kilgore. But when you look at this, so much East Texas flavor, who do you think has the best chance of winning the state title? Well, if you're talking about the East Texas schools, then obviously I think Gilmer and Kilgore are the two teams to really watch. But keep an eye on Fairfield. Remember, they knocked off Navajo. Soda earlier, and that was an impressive win. Then Fairfield continues to roll on, but outside of East Texas, well, you gotta like Graham, and you gotta like the defending state champion from Stephenville. Oh, lest we forget Carthage rolling along as well. They only have the one loss to 4A state ranked White House. By the way, Graham played their 1,000th game tonight. How about that? Let's take a break. Coming up next, North Texas, a stunner in Mesquite. Highland Park puts its 77 game winning streak at home on the line. And the great Corbin Smith will chime in from the Dallas Morning News. Scoreboard Live rolls on in a moment. Congratulations to our Week 5 winners of the Bill Ford Top Player of the Week trophy. Drum roll, please. Kent Myers has Saxe undefeated 3.9 GPA and expected to be drafted by Major League Baseball. Brian Hammond is one of the top rushers in the DF dub. Jesse Vea Darez averaged 19 yards a rush for Raymondville. And then Stockdale's Matt Valadez ran for even more 22 yards a pop on a 418 yard night. If you wink, you might miss the blazing speed of Winks Riley Richardson, who's a two time winner. And in private schools, John Cleveland of Fort Worth Trinity, he leads his team in receiving and tackles. Nominate your favorite player at playeroftheweek.com. 11 5 a action out of the north central Texas area. One of those battles in the skeet. The three and three Skeeters against an undefeated John Horn Jaguar team. Skeeter says, well, we don't care if they're undefeated because on the very first play of the game, it's Shadavian Reed on the handoff. 75-yard touchdown run. Skeeters lead it 7-0. Later in the first quarter, it's Reed, that man again, looking for a hole and just popped right through it in for the score. 14-0 Skeeters lead. Just a few minutes later, deja vu. Shadavian Reed. Should Hoobie right in for the score. 21 0. And how about that? Mesquite handing John Hornets first loss 31 17. Losses? No losses between DeSoto and to Mansfield Timberview until tonight. Of course, it's Jamie and Pierce Peterson with a big run there. Nice cut, pushed out of bounds. Sets up Peterson again, takes it in for the score. Now it's 13 7. DeSoto was down early in this, but then as Timberview gets ready to punt, Nick Orr flies in, blocks the punt, picks it up. The scoop. 
and the score takes it back. Minnesota kicks it into high gear, and the state's third-ranked team wins handily, going away from Timberview 55-20. District 10 4A, roll that tape. Showdown between Highland Park and Mesquite Poteen. The Scots looking to extend their 77-game home winning streak, and that's Brooks Bergen. You'll know a lot about him over the year. He gets in again right up the middle for the score. Not once, not twice, but how about three times a charm? Bergen leaps into the end zone. This one is all Highland Park. They win it big. Pretty impressive win by the Scots, 41-26. to Let's find out what Corbett Smith will be writing about in Sports Day HS tomorrow morning in the Dallas Morning News. Corbett, Randy Allen, 78 wins in a row at home at Highland Park. Put in perspective how impressive that is. He's been coaching there for 15 seasons, and he has yet to lose a home game. I don't think there's any coach in the state that can that, that can tout uh, something as impressive as that. Randy Allen's program is phenomenal, and, and tonight, uh, as an underdog, they came out guns blazing, uh, you know, got up 28 to nothing really quick against a very talented Poteet team, and they held on. Brooks Bergen with a very impressive performance. Just showed his offensive wizardry. Uh, Allen making some great play calls in that game, and, and they look phenomenal. Well, Corbett, of course, Highland Park beat Poteet, as you mentioned. Let me ask you about that game involving those other two Mesquite schools. How about the Skeeters win over a previously unbeaten John Horn team tonight? Yeah, I think I was real surprised with the, how flat Horn came out. They turned the ball over quite a bit. And I think this might have been one of those consummate trap games because Horn might have been looking ahead to next week's game against Longview. Everybody assumed that that was going to be for the district title. Well, uh, Mesquite had something to say about that. Certainly impressive performance by them. And, and they've played well. They've just, you know, struggled against the better teams that they've played. Thanks for the knowledge, buddy. Appreciate it. Check out Corbett Smith and the kicker, David Newberry, as we simulcast their radio show in Dallas on 1310 The Ticket, powered by the Dallas Morning News. They're all over the DF Dub right before this show at 11 o'clock to midnight. Well, in speaking about Class 5A, let's take a look at the top 10. The Allen Eagles had an interesting night. The only thing that could stop them was a power outage before the game. Then they embarrassed Plano East 62 to 17. 14th straight win over them. Kyler Murray, Four touchdowns, they continue to look like the best team. Business as usual, and just looking right down the top then, the closest anyone came to beating one of those ranked schools was Round Rock Westwood, and they lost by 21 to Hendrickson. And that was after putting 37 points on the board. They figured that game would be a shootout, but business as usual for everybody else. So we haven't seen a number one go down. Maybe a little bit later in the show. Let's take a timeout. Coming up next, it's off to H-Town. We got highlights of Houston Lamar, state finalist last year. Hightower and the Angleton games, plus Austin right around the corner. Scoreboard Live is rolling on after this short timeout. Down to the greater Houston area we go, the battle of the Fort Bend ISD schools, Hightower and Clements. Opening possession for Hightower, that means Roosevelt Appleton in. He barrels in from two yards out. Canes on top, 7-0. Clements, however, with the answer. They march right down the field. Colt Harfield with the pass to Luke Mayock. Nice catch for the touchdown game tied at seven. Back come the Hurricanes. Appleton again on the run, this time for much longer distance. 51 yards to the end zone, and it's 14-7 Hightower. Then the Hurricanes to the bag of tricks with the flea flicker wide open to Michael Landry. 73 yards on that, and uh, the Canes roll to a 33-14 victory over Fort Ben Clements. Wildcats are fired up from Angleton. George Ranch also ready to go. They pick it up the first quarter. George Ranch's Darius Anderson oh. takes it in from 33 yards in for the score. 7-0 Longhorns. Back comes Angleton. It's Thomas Josie on the snap. He'll keep it. Turn in the corner. 48 yards for the score. 7-6. George Ranch on top by a point. Now in the second quarter, George Ranch's Timon Nolan with the screen pass to Xavier Marks. A little help there from the defender, and then that's a touchdown. 14-6, George Ranch, and they go on to get the win. Longhorns approved to 7-0. They beat Angleton 31-24. Houston Lamar looks like they're ready for another state title game run. Uh, looking to improve to 5-0 against Westside. 
Ronnie Wesley getting in for the 17 to nothing lead. Then Daryl Colbert launches a beautiful pass to Nicholas Turner, who turns heads and gets into the end zone for the touchdown. Not to be outdone, Ronnie Wesley shows off his agility again, makes a couple cuts. Oh, uh, are you kidding me? Look at this run. Oh, man, that would have been a touchdown in flag football. Then Colbert with another great pass. These guys are awfully good. This one to Shelby Walker, who walks it into the end zone. Lamar rolls. Tom Nolan's bunch well on their way to a 27th playoff run in 29 seasons. We remember last year, the first Houston ISD team in 20 years to get to the state title game. And with that, let's bring in my man, Ahmad Vital, who was at the game, representing for Scout.com and Fox Sports Southwest. What stood out to you, Ahmad, in this game? Well, the main thing that stood out more than anything, obviously, Daryl Colbert is, is 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 putting up crazy numbers and is doing some amazing things on the field. But this Lamar defense is just downright nasty. They got after uh, Michael Haywood for most of the game and just and really just kept him just really running around crazy for his life because he just he couldn't even get any passes off. So the Lamar defense did a lot of great things. Obviously, Ronnie Wesley, you saw some of the runs he had and, and some of the things they were able to do tonight offensively. But it fed, it fed a lot off of that defense. That defense gave them a lot of opportunities to be able to make some plays. And Lamar capitalized on every single one of them. Outside of the penalties, Lamar pretty much played about as good a game as you can play against another top team in Westside. Ahmad, you mentioned Colbert, you mentioned Wesley, you mentioned Haywood as well. There's obviously a lot of great talent on both sides of the football. So the big question is, does this team have all the tools and maybe the bracket help as well in 5A Division One to make another run back to the 5A D1 final? Let's, let's just say this, Craig. If Lamar does not make it back, to state, then I would think that they would probably look at the whole situation and say that that they have underachieved in, in that in that regards because this team this team may be better than the team last year and I know that's a bold statement but this team is really clicking they got a lot of good guys on those on those front lines they have skilled players out of this world they may have the best secondary in the country and I did say in the country they may have the best secondary in the country with 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 uh, with John Pattenberg, uh Holton Hill and. And uh, John Bonney in on the back end, so they have all the pieces together to be able to make another run at state. And I expect them to probably do that because I don't see any more resistance out of the regular season. And who knows who they'll get in the playoffs uh, down this way? But I think that they'll be able to make it through just fine. Thanks, Ahmad. Check them out at scout.com. I'm going to write some of that stuff. Best team in the state, <laughs> best secondary. We'll see if it plays out. Appreciate that. He's always on the pulse of the best athletes in the greater Houston area. Let's take a break. Coming up next, the defending state champs, the number one team in the land, pushed to the limit by Lago Vista. Find out if Cameron Yo can make Yeoman's work tonight, or is it another upset special by the Vikings after this? It's not everything, but the effort to win is. Give effort every day, baby, and you'll get better to be a success. You understand? Yes, sir. Eight years, nobody's done that. It's been 62 straight games. Nobody's done that. But we... Oh! That's Alan Hare with Flair, who put Lago Vista on the map after the Vikings pulled off the unbelievable ending Refurio 62 game regular season winning streak earlier this year. Craig Way calls Coach Hare the best coach in America nobody knows. Well, we all know him now, right? But could the Vikings pull off the unthinkable and upset number one Cameron Yo, the defending state champs, working on a 20 game winning streak to Sizemore Field for this one? Tough task of containing Cameron's Aaron Sims, the slippery junior, showing elusiveness, speed, and vision. He would be off to the races, but fortunately for Lago Vista, this one would be called back. And the cheerleaders were happy about that. But then later, deja vu all over again. Here's the thing. We're showing you Cameron Yo here. But in the end, it's Lago Vista stunning the world. Wow. Pulling off two of the biggest upsets of the season. They came in winless in district and took down the defending state champs who won 20 straight games until tonight. Let's bring in the man of the hour on the phone, head coach Alan Hare, who joins us now after celebrating with his Vikings after this one. Coach, we love your speeches. How did you make your kids think they could pull off the unthinkable tonight? Well, it's an opportunity. Practice is an opportunity daily, and of course, each game's an opportunity. 
And like I tell them, you don't have to you don't have to be the best team. You have to play the best within that 48 minutes. And uh, our kids responded to that. Alan, one of the things that comes to mind for anybody that looked at the graphic, they saw well, well, well they've lost three games. They, they they had not won a district game until then. It is a week by week challenge. I know for coaches to try to make sure they're young men respond and is that for this team especially with some young guys that you have also to make sure they keep that intensity going on a week in week out basis yes sir and what you try to do is improve and then as a coach what you got to do i feel like you got to develop a cause and each week you got to have a cause going into the game and so with that cause is a purpose and uh, you know we had we're zero and three against cameron in 2010 we lost him in the state semis and then we had the fortunate, uh, the luxury of playing them twice last year, once in district, once in the third round. So we're familiar with them. They're a great program, and uh, that, that helped going into it. But uh, our kids just want to be physical and uh, want to be confident and uh, take our shot at it, and it worked out for them. Coach, you've built something great in such a short amount of time. Just wanted to ask you, when Craig Way said you were the best coach in America that nobody knows, what's been the response from the other coaches in the state of Texas? Well, you know, I initially wanted his cell phone number because I wanted to call and thank him and tell him I appreciate that. That's humbling to me. Uh, we've had a long road here to, to get this program established, and we just had great kids with a, a great community and great parent support. But uh, it's meant a ton. I've got a lot of – he is, uh, he is, you know, big time in Texas high school football, and a lot of people value his opinion. And uh, I still get comments from his, uh, his, his, his nice words toward me, and I do appreciate that. And uh, – uh, it wouldn't happen without great kids and, and great coaches on staff that uh, teach those guys how to play this great game. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, it's uh, compliments richly deserved because, Alan, I know how hard it is to try to deal with the district that you deal with and the region that you deal with as well. But congratulations on the big win and uh, keep all those amazing speeches coming as well. Well, I appreciate it, and I appreciate the time, and thanks for having us on the show. You Thanks, bet. Coach. Enjoy the weekend. We'll look forward to you seeing you guys down the road in the playoffs. Well, with that, let's take a look at the Class 2A Top 10. So there will be a big shakeup at the top with Cameron Yo going down. Now, you had some question marks about Yo during the season. We know how good they were last year, but now who do you think will step up to be number one? I, I think it's Newton that's going to be number one, but East Bernard is right there. Of course, East Bernard was the 2A Division II state champion last year. Yo won in D1. And don't, don't worry too much about Rick Roach Ball Club. Yo men are going to be fine. I, I'm still telling you about Wall and Tatum. Tatum and White Oak was a battle of unbeatens tonight, and you see Tatum wins by 21 in that one. Hallettsville also look good tonight, and keep an eye on Franklin. Those are some teams to watch. I've been also talking about uh, Hugh Springs. Now, they got pushed by Paul Pewitt, unless we forget Refurio is, well, they're still Refurio. They have yeah. that one loss to Lago. That's why the Division I and the Division II brackets in 2A could be as entertaining as in any classification this year, and I think that was the case last year as well. Yeah, and you look at Refurio, they're starting to score points again, yeah. so a couple <laughs> more weeks, they'll be scoring 80. Let's take a break. Coming up next, Waco, Rio Grande, the Permian Basin in a single battle. It's never been done. We're doing it next. We'll check the Class 2A Top 10 and the DQ Big Game of the Week right around the corner. Top Player of the Week watch list. These are some of the guys we're keeping an eye on for the prestigious award. How about Odessa Permian? They're going to be great in a couple of years. All those super sophomores like Keith Wood, Gilmer's Josh Walker committed to Texas A&M, Justin Twine, a good one, Raylon Singleton, he's going to Utah, and how about Argyle's Ian Sadler, who's going to Texas Tech? We move on to the Super Syntex region. 5A action, and that's, of course, in District 8. That's Coppers Cove and the Midway Panthers, who have just the one loss. Dogs with a couple losses, and it's Ben Hicks on the fake handoff. Keeps it in, finds the end zone there for the Panthers. The Cove responds, however. It's Shaq Flewellen. He'll power his way in across the goal line. I figured you'd like that name, Shaq ah, Flewellen. I like that. Takes it in. Midway does win the shootout, however, 42 to 39. How about this matchup at 17-3A? What a way to kick off district play. Don't you want one of those vehicles like that? That's oh, yeah. Lorena and Conley at Mac People's Stadium first quarter. Christian Bound hands to Chris Robinson. He goes 70 yards for the touchdown, and the Cadets lead it by a score of 7 to nothing. Still in the first quarter, following a Lorena Leopard fumble. It's the Cadets with the ball again. This time, the pitch goes out to Josh Terrell, takes it in, 14-0. Connolly in the second quarter. Lorena trying to fight back. Andrew Marrero up the middle. 
cuts it a 14-8 after a two-pointer, but it's Conley that gets the win. 34-28, 17-3A, one of those very compacted, tightly contested 3A districts. In the Rio Grande, Mercedes in Rio Grande City, Brattlers, Bernie Tangema, born with cerebral palsy, never stopped him from going out for football, takes it in for the honorary touchdown pregame. Everybody enjoy that. He's grown up with his teammates, and tonight they wanted to honor him with that. First quarter, pretty emotional night as Renee Presas to Gilbert Vega over the middle for the score, 7-0 Mercedes. Then the Rio Grande City would strike back Noah Gonzalez, the third, I guess in G3, getting it done. That tied it at seven. But after that, it's all Mercedes. They go to 3-0 in the district with a 42-24 victory. We're in District 31, Westlaco East and San Benito at Bobby Morrow Stadium. Defensive battle. Wildcats up 7-0, but the Greyhounds fumble the punt and the East recovers. And that leads to this. Sayu Cellular getting it done. The hot skip and the jump into the end zone. That makes it 14 to nothing, and that's your final. 14 to nothing, West Laco East. Let's jump into the Permian Basin region and a matchup between Denver City and Kerbin. And in the second half, it's Mason Milligan to Caleb King. He'll pick up a couple of yards there. Fourth down on the drive now, and then Milligan says, well, fourth down, got to go for it. And go he does. 47 yards for the score. Mustangs get the win of a permit, 28-12. Coming up next, a small school showdown in the DQ Big Game of the Week. Woo! Woo! They are living the dream in Sinton, Texas, because the DQ store, right across the street from Pirate Stadium. Yeah. And they've got a big one at Pirate Stadium tonight, Sinton and Ingleside. These guys are rivals, neighbors, they're friends, they hate each other, they love each other. It's all kinds of good stuff. In fact, the winner of this game for the last decade has decided who wins the district. So it's Ingleside at Sinton, and it is certainly big enough to be our... DQ Big Game of the Week! You know when you travel over 300 miles to play a district game? The Panhandle has to be involved. It's Amarillo Tascos hosting San Angelo Central. Bobcats undefeated ahead the long road trip, and maybe the effects show there as the ball is ripped right out of the hands there for Tascosa. And then as the Rebels get going, another fumble once more for the Bobcats. Tascos on the move now. This is Tucker Davidson to Brant Roush in for the score. It was 14-0. Rebels with the lead there. And then, once more, another touchdown. This one takes it in, and it's 14-7, but it's Tascosa getting the win, handing San Angelo Central its first loss of the season. Let's boogie to the Coastal Bend. Corpus Christi Ray putting their 5-0 mark on the line against the Alice Coyotes. It was a physical game early. Joseph Cantu would get his helmet knocked off. Well, maybe not. Well, you know, you get the idea. Cantu... There's a fumble, and, and that's the thing about the physical play between these two teams. The Texans' next possession, and they would fumble again. Alice recovers, and they are in business again. John Jaramillo will take it all the way down for the score, and Alice wins it 65-46 to as Corpus Christi Ray is 6-0. Look out for those guys. DQ Big Game of the Week is what Dairy Queen is really all about. Two small schools and small towns getting together on a Friday night in an old-fashioned Texas rivalry that will solve bragging rights for the next year. In 2008, Sinton was 1-8. and eight. Then they flipped the script to a 50-9 and nine record and several playoff runs, while Ingalls' side does it on their side. Nine win seasons in the last two, bowing out in the state quarters. Ingalls' side's star quarterback has a good chance at finishing in the top ten and passing all time in the state. Neil Beasley and the crew thought this would be a high-scoring affair, but think again in the DQ Big Game of the Week. Ingleside High School, just north of Corpus Christi. The Mustangs able to run with any herd. Plenty of athletic history here. On the gridiron, these Stangs have ponied up a nine-year playoff streak intact. The home of the father of the wishbone, Emery Ballard, still balling. Sinton Pirates, meanwhile, are players, too. In fact, the winner of this game has gone on to share or win district the last 10 years straight. Pirates haven't swung and missed much. Five consecutive nine-win seasons. 
trademarked Sinton S, a symbol of success. All sports teams saw postseason action last year, and plenty of success in the classroom as well. But Ingleside had the Pirates fit to be tied last year in this rivalry game, and there's no escaping. That's got to change this year. But sitting, folks, not just talking the talk, but walking the walk, coming from the pep rally to the local DQ right next door to the stadium. And there's no party like a DQ party. Want to try a smoothie game? Thank you. How close are these townsfolk? Ingleside coach Greg Hesseltine won two state baseball titles at Sinton High School. The coach's best friend's kid starts at linebacker for Sinton. He'll be against Coach Hazeltine tonight. Both schools with quarterbacks starting since their freshman year. Sinton junior Alan Hansen getting some college attention, 3,000 yards as a dual threat last season. Meanwhile, Ingleside's Tristan Barajas should finish in the top 10 in the state's all-time list of passing yardage leaders. Wow. But he'll need them all to get by the hometown Pirates tonight. Intensity's focused 48 minutes on the job at hand with nothing else on our minds. Intensity knows no boundaries, no limits, and no fear. Go out there and play intense football for 48 minutes and let's get to one and know. Let's get a family on three. One, two, three. Nothing like opening district play with the district game of the year and against your arch rivals. Mustangs, saddle up. Ten play drive ends here. Check out the grab. Senior Terrence Robinson. Wow. Colorado State already offered. And with snags like that, there'll be more to come. 7-0 after one. Second quarter. Pirates right the ship. 11 play drive themselves. Nick Zapeta with 34 yards in the drive. And Hamson ends it. 7-0 after that. Later second, Ingleside back the other way. Zoinks, combo! Last year's third place finisher in the state pole vault. Vaults on the ball, sitting ball going the other way. Come here, bud. I just want to know what you're doing and what you're seeing. Why are you trying to win the game all by yourself? But the Stangs hold, get it back, and get in range. Lead right. We're going to get lots of bodies to the party, and let's blow them into the end zone. Got it? Let's get it in. Kyle Hernandez, the honors. 13-9, though, after the block and returned PAT. In fact, 13-9, your score at the break. Keep your eyes on the prize. Put your face on people. Make play. Block people like you've been coached to block them. Tackle people like you've been, tackle, like you've been coached to tackle them. And let's get after their tails. It's yours if you want it. That's all it is. But you got to play one play every second. It's, I mean, that me thing, maximum effort every rep. Go get it done. Got me? Yes, sir. Cold peach? Cold peach. Get after their tails. Everybody up. Boom. What do you say? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Second half. Sitton takes the lead 16-13. But another great grab the other way. Barajas to Trent Selby. 45 yards. Sets up six. 21-16. Ingleside back up. Hansen back the other way. Oh, Martin Pruitt jumps the route. He gone. That's a pick six. 28-16, visiting Mustangs. Hanson, though, gets his third touchdown of the game. That cuts it to five, and then driving for the win. But it's fourth and five. Hanson back to pass. Can't find anybody? No! Steve Garza, the sack. How about that ball game? Ingleside, 35, sitting 23 on the DQ big game of the week. This year, definitely, they put up more of a fight, and they've never lost on this home field, but we're the first ones to take it. So, yes, sir, it feels definitely good. It feels good. <laughs> honestly, I love it because it sets the tone for the rest of the district play, so I honestly love it, honestly. When we were little, yeah, they always got the better of us because they were bigger, but once we started getting to high school, it was a whole different ball game. We all got bigger, stronger, faster. And then, I mean, it proves out here. I mean, look at the, I mean, we won. I mean, I'm just so happy we won. It's always weird. Uh, every time I come here, I, you know, I, th I think of myself out here maroon, you know, wearing the old maroon. But, uh, you know, you move on, and, and, and times have gone by, and, you know, I, things change. So I'm, I'm a Mustang now. All right, it may just be the beginning of district play, but it looks like the Mustangs are stampeding towards another district title. <laughs> Thank you, Beezer. What a doozy next week. Number three, DeSoto takes on Midlothian. Back with highlights from East Texas, Brazos Valley, and so much more after this.
Global Scoreboard Live. I'm Aaron Hardigan. Each week, we have highlighted the top players in the state of Texas position by position. Tonight, we take a look at the top inside linebackers. And the Big 12 has stolen verbal commitments from four of the five led by Dallas Carter's Cameron Hampton, who chose Texas, while Justin Phillips of Pearland is headed to play for defensive coordinator Glenn Spencer and the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Dakota Allen is headed to Texas Tech. Now, Sam Sizelove is committed to Kansas State, but his teammate Connor Wilson just recently switched from KSU to Texas Tech, and I know the Red Raiders are making a strong push for Sizelove. And then Zach Whitley of North Shore is headed to number one Alabama. He will be a great fit in Saban's defense. Next week, we'll take a look at the top outside linebackers. In the meantime, let's head back for more with Rick and Craig. Thank you, Aaron, to the Brasses Valley, the Brenham Cubs, and the Montgomery Bears. They combined 7-0 district coming in. And check it out. First big play of the game, first quarter. Cubs driving Caleb Hill's pass. It's intercepted by Danton Kranz. He will return it all the way to the Brenham 8. And it's ice cream for everybody. The Bears cash in on the next play. Tyler, touchdown Brown, takes it in on the keeper. Montgomery out to the 7-0 lead. But Brenham will answer in the second frame on fourth and long. Hill hooks up to James. Oh, man, you the man at the pylon. And he gets in. The game's tied at 7. Just before the break, though, the Cubs would strike again. But just about the same play. Hill to Cortland Sutton, who juggles the ball into the end zone. And in the end, the Cubs... They remain unbeaten in District 27 to 10 the final there. AM consolidated, looking for their ninth straight win over Bryan. Consol gets on the board first in this one. Kobe Miller, swing pass to Derek Dick, who does the rest. Coming right into your living room. 24 yards for the touchdown, but the Tigers are up 14 to nothing in the first quarter. Consolidated, goes back to the air. Miller hits Sherman Wilder, and he is a wild one. 17-yard touchdown pass, that makes it 21 to nothing. Then Miller will go up top again, the play fake, and he hits Rodney Jernigan, who turn again on this one. He will go 73 yards to the house. It's all A&M consolidated, 56 to 20, Greg. Big time action at Kyle Field there. We move it on out to far west Texas, out to El Paso. Bowie and Andrus, District 1 in Class 4A. Bowie was up 3-0 in the half of the third quarter. Andrus starting quarterback Troy Klemanski out with a knee injury, so it's left to backup quarterback Kevin Wilson to do the honors. And he does with a nice run here on third down. Then it's going to be Tayshawn Gary. Gary can tote the mail for you, and he does here. 30-yard touchdown run. That one takes it in for the score, and Andrus goes on to the win over Bowie, 27-7. Coming up next, East Texas, Waco, and much more if you keep it where it is. It's High School Scoreboard Live is brought to you by Ford F-Series, America's best-selling truck for 36 straight years. By Dairy Queen, for the best-tasting treats, eats, and drinks in Texas. DQ just tastes better. And by State Farm, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. 4A action in District 16. John Tyler taking on Corsicana. JT was down 14 to 3 before Giovanni McAllister strikes to Reggie Gibson for the touchdown, and it trims the deficit to 14 to 10. And once more, it is time to get a big time pass downfield, and it's Jeremy Wilson who will take it in for the score. Wilson again would add another touchdown, and John Tyler wins this one going away. They bounce back 51-22 to the final. District 12, 1A Division, one opener. Axtell and Bosqueville at Bulldog Stadium first quarter. The Longhorns on the opening drive. Michael Milburn burning them with a hard run, but he's stripped of the football by LaFell Estelle, who will be doing show and tell about that one. Jamie Saucedo recovers for the Bulldogs, but off the turnover, C.J. Collins on the quarterback keeper for the touchdown, and it's 7-0 Bosqueville. Later on, Collins again. He will coast into the end zone for the two-yard score. This one's all Bosqueville. They win it 28-8 in their district opener. Let's take a look at the Class 1A. And obviously, Wellington's the, the toast of most, and they were off this week. Yeah, well, they, they were going to play Chilton originally, and that game wound up being canceled. That's unfortunate because that would have been an interesting matchup to see the skyrockets at work. That game got canceled. Mason with a big win. 
Fall City. Yeah, the Beavers look good. Beat Pettis big time tonight. And keep an eye on those Munster Hornets to beat Electra tonight. Yeah. Pretty handily their first week in the top 10 poll. Hey, wanted to mention that tickets are on sale right now at Ticketmaster for the state championship games at AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. All the title games, including six-man football, will be played at the same venue for the very first time. And congratulations to Joey Florence of Denton Ryan, who coaches his 200th win tonight in a win over Flower Mound Marcus. And that'll do it for School Board Live. Join us for college football all Saturday. We'll have Kansas in the TCU game Saturday at 11 a.m. You can see Texas Tech, Iowa State at the same time on Fox Sports 1. For Craig Way, I'm Rick Renner. We'll wrap up the Red River Rivalry Day at 11 o'clock on Saturday night on Big 12 Live. Have a great week. We'll see you next week on School Board Live.